What's up guys, so today we're going to be doing a string alignment on the front end of my car. Uh, the first thing I've got to do though is i got to run out to the store and I need to get some string. And then I'm just going to use jack stands to hold each end of it and we'll go from there. My name is Zach Ellis and welcome to my journey. I don't know where I'm going or how I'm going to get there, but I'm going to be tearing shit up every step of the way. Along with a few friends of course. Honestly, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'll be building, modifying, repairing, fabricating, and racing every chance I get. <laughs> but if you enjoyed this content, don't forget to smash the subscribe button, and of course, enjoy the video. Pennsylvania roads are so f***ing bad. It is unreal. Look, let's look at my coffee from driving here. That's just ridiculous. But I'm gonna run in here and pick up everything I need, and then we'll uh, head over to uh, Bill's shop. Well, we'll probably head back to my shop first, and then we'll head over to Bill's shop in a little bit. I just have the worst luck. When I was leaving Harbor Freight, I was walking up on my car and I noticed something on the side. I guess, driving through town, I ran over a, a pile of grease. It flung it all up on the door here, and then a little bit more back here. I just can't catch a break. All right, so we just made it back to the garage from the store. Uh, the only thing you're gonna need to actually do an at-home alignment is jack stands or whatever you wanna tie your strings to because they're gonna go on the front and the back of the car. You need some string. Uh, I'm gonna use a roller. You can use a tape measure, really anything that you can measure with. Uh, and then a uh, knife, razor blade, scissors, whatever you have. And that's just so you can trim the string if you choose to trim it. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do when you're uh, doing the alignment is make sure your steering wheel is straight. I've just made sure that the steering wheel is in a straight position. You want the steering wheel straight because it's super annoying if you're driving down the road and it's crooked. <laughs> I just know that right now when I drive down the road, the steering wheel is cocked to the right a little bit and that's probably because my alignment is way off. So, got the steering wheel straight, now we're gonna set up the string and the jack stands and go from there. So I just set up the jack stands front and back and then I ran the string between the two and I was making adjustments to get the string about as close to the center of the wheel as I can possibly get it. It doesn't have to be exactly there, but the center gives you the best reference point to set the distance of the string from the wheel. Um, we're not making a plane, so I don't think it's critical that we're exactly dead center. So now I'm gonna measure from the center bore of the wheel to the string front and back to make sure they're the same. So for this one here, if we go from the center of the wheel to the string, let's say two and three quarters. So then we go to the back, see where it's sitting at. 
it is two and an eighth, so we're gonna scoot this back out so it's closer to two and three quarters. So now we've got our string set to the right uh, distance from the wheel. We're gonna go ahead and measure the front side of the wheel and the back side of the wheel to see where we need to make adjustments for the alignment. And something to note about this alignment, this alignment is only gonna be changing your toe. Uh, there's other ways to measure camber, but today we're just doing the toe because I know mine is off terribly. So we'll go ahead and start measuring. So if I measure the front here, I'm seeing inch and nine sixteenths. And then in the back here, we are an inch and seven eighths. So we got an inch and nine sixteenths in the front and we measured an inch and seven eighths in the back, which basically means this front right tire is a quarter inch towed out, which is way off. I mean, way, way off. We wanna get this closer to an eighth inch or so toe in. So we're going to uh, jack the car up, get to that tie rod end, and I'm gonna adjust it out because my tie rod is in the back of my wheel to push the toe of the car in. Um, basically we need a quarter, so we have to tow this thing in about a half inch. So we're gonna do a pretty good bit of adjusting on this tie rod end to get it close to where we need it. Okay, so I got the wheel off. Um, you don't have to take your wheel off, but for me, I think it makes life way easier. So I've got the wheel off. I've got to break free the jam nut, and then I'm gonna adjust this. Uh, out, so I'm gonna push the tie rod end away from me, which is gonna in return pull the toe of the car in. So I made an adjustment on the tie rod end. Uh, hindsight, I probably should have marked the tie rod end and the uh, actual threaded portion so that I know how much adjustment I got out of X amount of rotations. But instead, I did it the Neanderthal way and just spun the shit out of it and uh, hopefully it's aligned. But before I put my tire back on, I wanted to show you uh, how my tire has worn since I ran camber with a terrible alignment. So if you look at the tire here, this is the outside. You see the tread pattern roll across to the inside. The camber is worn down pretty much so there's no tread left there. But since I am in the process of taking the camber out and fixing my alignment, I don't think I'm going to need a tire before next race season. Sometime uh, after winter I'll probably buy new tires. I don't know if I'm going to get the RE71s again. I've been looking at the RT660s, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. For now, I'm going to fix this alignment, throw the tires on, and then I might rotate the tires, get the front ones to the back and the back ones up front. But I'm going to throw this tire back on and double check the alignment. So I just put the car back down on the ground. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is uh, drive the car back and forward just a few inches so that your uh, tires can settle on the ground properly. Cause right now, once you drop the car back down on the ground, the tires are sort of in a bind between the concrete and the tire itself, which could possibly affect the measurement that I'm getting. All right, so re-measuring now. My front end I'm seeing, I guess if you look at the inside of the string, it's an inch and nine sixteenths. 
and you look at the back side, from the inside is an inch and a half, which inch and a nine inch and nine sixteenths in the front, inch and a half in the back means we're using the string and the tape measure. We're pretty much an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch toe in, which is pretty much exactly where we want to be. So that means this front right side is finished. Now I'm going to take the string and the jack stands to the other side, measure again, and see how that side looks. A little tip for y'all, when you're doing this, you want to pick a day that's not raining. It is raining on me right now. I did not check the weather before I started this. So uh, don't be an idiot. Do it on a not so wet day. Alright, so tire's taken off. We're gonna do the same thing. Loosen that fing tire rod end, adjust it out to dial toe in, and then uh, double check our adjustments. Alright, so we made the uh, tire rod adjustment. Again, I didn't measure. Probably should have, but I didn't. Um, but I didn't turn it nearly as much as the other side because it wasn't nearly as far as out. So I'm gonna throw the tire back on, tighten it down, drop the car on the ground, roll back and forward again. Set the string back up and measure again. All right, so I think I just got lucky twice in a row. The other side, I made my adjustment and I was within a 16th, uh, maybe just a tick over a 16th of an inch toe in on the passenger side. On this side, I just did my measurement and I'm exactly the same, about a sixteenth of an inch toe in on this side. So now I'm going to clean up all this crap and I'm gonna test drive the car. Hopefully it runs pretty well and I can preserve my tire until summertime next year, which I don't have a doubt that I can. Um, especially since it's getting colder and nastier every day. Pretty soon I won't drive this thing at all. Um, but hopefully this worked for me and hopefully it works for you as well. Again, this isn't gonna be as accurate as an actual alignment machine, which is clear. You're measuring degrees with that thing versus this we're measuring inches for us. All right, so I just got done test driving the car. Um, I would say the alignment is better. Now, um, since it was just a string alignment and not an actual laser alignment or alignment rack style, um, the car pulls a little bit to the left. Uh, the steering wheel is straight though. Um, so in that aspect, it's better. And then as far as tire noise goes, it is also better. I took a little bit more camber out of the tires off camera before I did the alignment. Overall, I am satisfied with it. It's worth, uh, I think it took me like a half hour to do it. Well, we'll call it an hour. It took me an hour to do it and uh, the car feels better. The only thing that sucks is for like an autocross alignment, you kind of want to dial a little toe out just because it makes your turn in very uh, sharp, if you will, or it's much more aggressive. Since I've nailed dialed a little toe in, it feels almost hard to turn the car, which isn't actually the case, but it just feels that way. Um, but for street driving, it's gonna do fine. It's not like I'm racing anybody on any crazy roads. But I, uh, I just drove over to my friend Bill's shop. He's got a uh, basically a, a Jeep fabrication shop where he builds off-road Jeeps. We're gonna go in here, we're gonna check him out and see uh, how his new shop is coming along. He moved in, I think, like a week ago. So he's been slowly getting equipment and stuff into there. This is Bill's uh, personal vehicle that he takes rock calling. I think he just went like a week ago. 
But uh, as you can see, this thing is massive. Massive, massive. But it does what he needs to do. Let's go in here and check him out. Hello? Yo. Oh, thank God. Look at this fing rig. <laughs> you haven't been here in a while, have you? No. So we're over here at my friend Bill's shop. He owns Hardline Fabrication. He's uh, been in the works to kind of get the business up and running for the past, I don't know, I guess you could say year. But just recently he took the jump into purchasing a shop. So this is a, it's 50 by 100, right? It's a 50 by 100 shop. It's got one 16 foot door entry. He's got two lifts here. But uh, you can see kind of the projects that he's working on. This is a Jeep that, it's kind of his personal build that he puts time to it here and there when he when he can but you kind of get the idea of what he's going for it's all about that that off-road capability if that makes sense he even does jobs not related to off-road so he's working on a uh was the e320 here but then he's also this 94 sierra here for a friend his friend brought it in to get cab corners uh, rockers welded in but once he pulled the bed off just to make life a little easier on the rockers and the uh, cab corner he f noticed that the previous owner of the truck tried to do a, a c-notch so they did the axle flip and they wanted to c-notch the frame but they didn't support it at all so he's in the process of trying to repair this if you can see I'm trying to move the at the frame Oh my God. So you can see some of the things that the uh, the locals bring to him. So he's not opposed to work on anything. Uh, he's worked on my truck a few times. He's working on this. So he's going from 42 inch tall tires over to a, uh, a lower suspension truck. And then he's got a friend over here who has his, uh, his Toyota in here with the full exoskeleton cage. He didn't actually build this Jeep. It was his friend and some other people, but his friend now brings it here for just general maintenance. They uh, they frequently off-road together, so it uh, it's just here for some tune-ups while the season's on the slow side. But if you guys are in the area of Limerick Township, Pennsylvania, we're out closer to Philly. Um, if you guys have anything that you need fabricated, He's definitely an expert in Jeep, but he does a lot of fabrication on other things. So if you need anything, check out hardlinefabrication.com. Hardlinefab.com. Nah, uh, he'll hook you up.